Hey everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rager, another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. Two days till Turkey Day, everybody. One of my favorite holidays. I like the turkey trot, the turkey parade. Took my daughter there one time. It was fantastic. All the floats. She thought it was the coolest thing in the world. You know, everybody says I sound like Kermit the Frog. I got a pretty good Kermit impression. Hi, Kermit the Frog here. I actually, believe it or not, when the original Kermit was replaced, I tried out to be the new Kermit. I never got the call back. Rainbow connection. Hey, Miss Piggy. Anyway, at the Thanksgiving Day Parade, they had this gigantic Kermit the Frog float every year. A couple times I took my daughter to see it. She never once said, Daddy, you sound like that big frog. But you all say it all the time. Anyway, I love this time of year. And what a week it is. What a week we have. The Lions play on Thursday against the Packers. They got to get it right despite being 8-2. and two. They didn't look all that great on Sunday, even though they came away with the win against the Bears. We know that on Friday at Ford Field, Michigan State plays Penn State. And then, of course, the big game on Saturday, the game, Michigan-Ohio State. And that's what I want to get into here. Because I need to ask the question to you that nobody's asking. Or if they're asking it, they're not asking it boldly, like I'm going to do. But before we get into that question, I do want to remind you, please like and subscribe and follow. Leave a review wherever you get your podcast. I am happy to report Two things. Number one, the numbers have gone up, people. They've gone up. You apparently are down with having a chance to come on the Daily Ticket. We're going to do it next week, the first edition of it. Come on the Daily Ticket. I'm going to pick three of your reviews. Come on the Daily Ticket, and you're going to go against your fellow Daily Ticket viewers and listeners in Detroit Sports Trivia. It's Stump the Schwab meets Jeopardy. And I have a huge announcement at the end of the program about that. But in the meantime, please follow wherever you get your podcast, leave a review. And then if you'd be so kind at Rieger 1984, R-I-G-E-R 1984, it's down here on the scroll. Please send me a picture so I can put you in the drawing. I'll reach out to you. We'll put you on the daily ticket and we'll have you go against other people in Detroit Sports Trivia, I will be Alex Trebek. And then I have a big announcement at the end of this podcast about who the winner of that will face. On with the show. I told you I was going to ask you a bold question. I was going to ask you a question that nobody is asking. So let me go ahead and ask it. How much did the cheating help Michigan? As we approach Michigan, Ohio State, We do know the season is on the line for Michigan. We do know the season's on the line for Ohio State. It's going to be one of the best games. The ratings are going to be through the roof. I can't wait. No Jim Harbaugh to coach. We already know this. He got suspended by the Big Ten. They were going to fight it, but then decided not to fight it. We know why they didn't fight it. Because they ended up having to fire Chris Partridge, who either told people inside the program not to cooperate with the investigation, or he destroyed evidence, or both. Well, maybe he was working with Connor Stallions. I think we're led to believe he was probably working with Connor Stallions. We also found out that Uncle T, a donor, apparently was bankrolling the whole thing to Connor Stallions. So there's no lone wolf theory anymore. Connor didn't do this on his own, definitely didn't drop his own dime on this either. But Michigan was all ready to fight, as we know. All last week, we're going to fight, we're going to get our due process. Get Harbaugh back on the sidelines. Then what happened? This new information was going to come out. The Big Ten told Michigan such things. Michigan backed down. And all the people that were following Michigan's lead probably don't feel so hot about Michigan's leadership right now. But now we're here. That was then. This is now. Okay? But as we approach this game, and I've never shied away from this, the number one goal for Michigan is you got to win it all. And I know, like, duh, of course you want to win it all. No, no, no. You have to win it all. 
That is your only way as Michigan Wolverines to be thought of as not cheaters. Or let me rephrase that. You cheated, but it didn't really work all that well. If you win it all, which is eight games in a row without Connor Stallions on the Michigan football staff and in the Michigan sidelines, nobody can say shit to you. They can call you cheaters, but you can show them a ring. They can call you cheaters. You can put the ring on the middle finger if you want and tell them where to go. They can't say anything to you. They can call you cheaters, but obviously the cheating did not help all that much. Didn't give Michigan all that big of an advantage, you'll think, because you won eight in a row. But a funny thing has happened. Michigan doesn't look all that dominant anymore. Started in the Purdue game. All of a sudden, Purdue's D-line getting pressure on this great Michigan O-line. It was followed up by Penn State. Michigan had to change their entire concept against the Nittany Lions. Brought in extra offensive linemen. J.J. was under pressure early on. Was going to be a long day. Now, that worked. Second half, they ran the ball 32 straight times. And then it continued against Maryland. I think I have some stats. I think I have some proof. And you're not going to want to hear this if you're a Michigan fan, but it's my obligation to give this to you. I think I have reasons to prove to you that Michigan's cheating did, in fact, give Michigan a huge edge, a gigantic edge. Now, I know if you're a Michigan fan, you're watching this, maybe you've turned it off already, maybe you stopped listening, but hear me out for a second, okay? Hear me out. First, let me give you the good news, all right? Michigan's got offensive line issues. But the good news is, Miles Hinton, Ladarius Henderson will play on Saturday. Roman Wilson, the receiver, J.J.'s top target, he will play as well. So that's fantastic news for the Michigan Wolverines. Fantastic news. They've been having all kinds of offensive line issues. And if that continues against the Buckeyes, probably one of the better fronts they're going to face, that could spell problem. But here's a couple things to look at, okay? First of all, I don't feel confident about this game anymore. All season long, I thought Michigan would kick the Buckeyes' ass. I don't feel that anymore. As recent as two weeks ago, the spread was like eight and a half if you look at the future spread. This week, the spread opened at five. It's already down to three and a half in favor of the Michigan Wolverines. They say home field gets you three points. So maybe you're looking at it as a half point advantage for Michigan. Michigan could be in trouble. They have not looked as good the last three games. And shockingly enough, Connor Stallions wasn't on the sideline the last three games. Like, I'm not going to count the Michigan State game, A, because Michigan State is horrendous, and B, it was days after Connor Stallions was busted. Remember the Big Ten told Michigan State, you don't have to play this game. You don't have to play this game. Don't worry. Michigan State said, we'll play it. They lost 49 nothing. It was an evisceration. But after that, Michigan had the bye week, and they haven't been as good. I have some stats for you. Maybe they're facts. That proves that the cheating scandal with Connor Stallions at the helm indeed did work. Let me read these to you. Let's start with J.J. McCarthy. All of a sudden, J.J. McCarthy doesn't look as good. Like, not as good. No way. Do you remember it wasn't too long ago, like three weeks, that J.J. was a Heisman hopeful? In fact, Michael Penix was struggling, and Caleb Williams was struggling, and Drake May was struggling. And people were sure that J.J. McCarthy is going to win the Heisman. Since then, he hasn't been all that impressive. Didn't get to throw the ball at all in the Penn State game. He was eight for nine, but just nine attempts. And then the Maryland game, he did not look good, like at all. And then... Because the original question I asked you, did the cheating help? Do you know that four of five of J.J. McCarthy's worst games of his career at Michigan, Connor Stallions was not on the sidelines. Is that proof? I don't know. You tell me. I got another one. According to S&P 
projections. Do you know that Michigan is underachieving by almost a touchdown a game? What's that type? Does that mean the cheating worked? And now there's no cheating, so Michigan isn't as good? Can you quantify that? Michigan as a team is scoring almost a touchdown less a game. And then I got one more for you before we dive more into JJ. This is the big one for me. Do you know that Michigan, over their first eight games of the season, defensively, they gave up 57 points. Do you know over their last three games? Their last three games, Purdue, Penn State, Maryland. They've given up 58 points. First eight games, 57 points. Next three, 58 points. We do know that the cheating helps the defense more than the offense. At least we're led to believe that, correct? So those are my three big facts. Does that prove that the cheating was beneficial? How beneficial do you think it was? Or maybe you just believe that J.J. got hurt in that Penn State game. He's their entire offense. They're not scoring as much. And it's injury. It's not cheating. Maybe you're onto something. Let's not forget last year. Last year, we were convinced that J.J. McCarthy could not get the job done. Do you remember the second to last game of the season? Second to last game of the season was against Illinois. Blake Corum got hurt. Michigan edged out the Illini 19-17. to Everybody freaked out. Next game was Ohio State. Everybody said the same thing. Oh, my God. Michigan can't throw the ball. Buckeyes are going to kick their ass. Games in Columbus. We're screwed. No. The feeling of beating the Buckeyes is so nice. What happened the next week? Michigan went to Columbus. Took on the Buckeyes. J.J. had his best game of his career. 263 in the air, three touchdowns. He was awesome. So for all the pundits and critics that said Michigan couldn't throw the football, they could only run the football, Jim Harbaugh and company said, screw you. Screw you. We can throw the football and J.J. can throw the football. But then you have to look at something else in that game. Go back and look at that game. Do you know how many points the Buckeyes scored in the second half? Three. Michigan whooped them, but it was a close game till the second half. Ohio State scored three points. C.J. Stroud was the quarterback, the same C.J. Stroud that's going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL, who's playing for the Texans and lighting it up, and without a doubt, the best Ohio State quarterback in the NFL maybe ever. Three points in the second half. Make you scratch your head a little bit. What hair I got left, maybe I'll scratch my head. What does that mean? Does that mean they were cheating? We know they were cheating. Does that mean it was super beneficial? I've given you other facts that might make you lean. Yes. But maybe you just don't buy it. Maybe you just don't buy it. Maybe your theory, and this is fine, but maybe your theory is with Jim Harbaugh not on the sideline, J.J. McCarthy just isn't that good. There's stats that back that up. J.J. McCarthy... With Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines, his security blanket. Eight games, 76.7% completion percentage. 148 and 193, in case you're wondering. 16 touchdowns, zero picks. Three rushing touchdowns. That's in eight games. That's Heisman-type stuff. J.J. McCarthy, without Jim Harbaugh, three games. 61.3 completion percentage. So he completes the ball almost 16% worse on a given game. That is a ton. Only two touchdowns, four interceptions, and zero rushing touchdowns. Maybe you believe that J.J. can't play without Jim on the sidelines. We all know what Jim does for J.J. Throws on the shoulder pads. Right? Pounds him on the shoulder pads. He's already gone on record to say J.J.'s the best quarterback at Michigan, or at least could be the best quarterback at Michigan. Maybe that's your theory to why Michigan hasn't looked as good. Maybe the fact that Sharon Moore doesn't seem like he has a complete grasp of the offense just yet. 
Maybe the fact that he ran the ball 32 straight times in Crappy Valley. Maybe the time that he refused to go for fourth downs at Maryland. Maybe that stuff is knocking on J.J.'s confidence. Or maybe the same thing happens this week that happened last year, which is J.J. goes out and proves idiots like me wrong. You got one way out, Wolverine fans. You got one way out. You want to win a national title? Cool. But you should be more worried about what people think of you. And if you win a national title, nobody can say shit to you. But if you don't win a national title, and dare I say, if you don't beat the Buckeyes, you know what's coming. Cheater, 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 cheater. You're a fucking cheater. That's what's coming. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with that at all. It's been a wonderful season. And the overall belief around these parts in southeastern lower Michigan, where I happen to be right now. Daughter's beautiful art, by the way. Staring at you. The belief has always been that Michigan's going to win it all. This is the year. They're good enough to win it all. They don't look as good the last three games. Is that the cheating or lack thereof? Is that something else? Let me know. Because like I mentioned, one way out, you got to win it all. And if you do, nobody can say anything. But if you don't, people will talk and not stop talking for like ever. Because let's be honest, people don't like Michigan fans. They just don't. The other thing I want to hit on very quickly we do know that Jim Harbaugh came back to coach this team. We do know that the NFL rumors are already popping up. Apparently, Jim, according to some sources, wants to be with the Raiders next year. You knew these were going to come. You know, hasn't happened the last two years. Broncos wanted him last year. He turned him down. Minnesota the year before that, I don't think Minnesota wanted him. Whatever the case is. We always know it's a possibility Jim wants to go back to the NFL. If he doesn't win a national title, do you still want Jim Harbaugh? Said a nice little run here. Took him a little bit of time to get here, though. And now you can make the thought that only when he started to cheat, he started to win. But in the process, look what's happened. Look what's happened, okay? I have in front of me a list of U of M football staffers to be fired or resigned or suspended the past 11 months, okay? I'm not even talking about Mozzie or Donovan Edwards or the stuff that happened last year. Last 11 months. Check this out. Offensive coordinator, Matt Weiss, fired. Assistant director, recruiter, Shemi Schembechler, fired after hired. Jim Harbaugh suspended a total of six games, suspended twice, two different times. Offensive coordinator, Sharon Moore, now the acting head coach. He was suspended earlier in the season. Recruiting analyst, Connor Stallions. Where in the world is Connor Stallions? Nobody knows. But he was forced to resign or just resign. And now the latest, Chris Partridge, the linebacker coach, who was fired on Friday. And now you wonder, too, is there more? NCAA investigation is kind of just getting going. It's only like three, four weeks old. Big Ten might be done with you, but NCAA aren't. So I do wonder. Next year's team is not going to be as good as this year's team. I think that's obvious because a lot of kids are leaving. Do you still want Jim Harbaugh? I asked this question on the radio and everybody said, yes, just want to win, which I totally respect. But do you still want Jimmy? A lot of stuff has happened on his watch. And if he doesn't win at all, is it really worth it? I would say, yeah, you keep winning. I'll keep Jim Harbaugh. That's my thoughts. What about you? Comment section below. I also want to know how much you think the cheating helped. Because nobody's really answered that. Some people say a ton. Some people say, some people say, oh, shut up. You're an idiot. Didn't help at all. Oh, signs. We all steal signs. So let me know. Comment section below. All right. I have no comments today. Usually daily ticket. I read a good comment. I read a bad comment. I got no comments today. Because after yesterday's episode about the Lions coming back against the Bears, everybody was so positive. There was no negative comments. Everybody's so happy. The Lions are 8-2. So here's what I wanted to do instead. I have a huge announcement. I did tell you, if you follow the daily ticket, 
And many of you have started to, so I really appreciate that. Wherever you get your podcast. If you review the daily ticket, you send me a tweet just with your name. Rieger 1984, R-I-G-E-R 1984. It's right there on your scroll, right there. Send me a tweet. And I'll get you on the daily ticket. We're going to have a little trivia contest. It's like Stump the Schwab meets Jeopardy. I'm going to be the game show host. We're going to have three of you guys. And then whoever wins is going to get the take on a 97 one the ticket personality. And I've reached out to the first personality. We'll do this like every two weeks. We'll have the daily ticket people, you all, who are nice enough to follow and review and rate. We'll have every two weeks, you go against each other, three of you. And then two weeks after that, the winner will take on a 97 one, the ticket personality. So for the inaugural one, I just got off the phone with him today. Stoney is in. The winner of the first next week, inaugural ticket trivia. Three of you will duke it out. One of you will come out alive, and the winner will take on Stoney. Maybe you're going to take him down, too. He's very excited to do this. So, please, for a chance to come on the Daily Ticket and play, all you got to do is follow the Daily Ticket wherever you get your podcast. Review the Daily Ticket, and please send me a tweet, Rieger1984, R-I-G-E-R-1984, and we will make sure to get to the tweets. And I will make sure to pick at random three contestants every couple weeks or so. But for the first one, Stoney's in. All right. That's the daily ticket for today. Tomorrow, we'll get you ready for Lions and Packers unless more Michigan news breaks. It's been a pleasure, everybody. How much has the cheating helped? I happen to think a lot. I gave you some reasons why. What about you? Bye-bye.